Hello, I'm Dr. Basil Considine. I'm here with the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to talk about conflict management, applying theories and models. This is one of many webinars that we offer here at ACU every semester. This is a brand new one, and like all of our webinars, it is recorded and archived on our website for your use. So if you have to drop out in the middle, don't worry, you can always watch this through our website, and we post a videos as well to our YouTube channel and uh, sometimes in aligning courses. So we are going to be focusing mainly on one assignment and how it illustrates certain principles we're going to be looking at, but first a little bit about the ACU Online Writing Center. We work with students in just about all of the ACU Dallas online programs. We are free of charge. There is no charge for any of our services. You can make an appointment to work with one of our consultants up to two times per week. You can make appointments up to two weeks in advance. There is no lifetime limit or something like that on the number of appointments. And you can also come to webinars such as this, access many of the resources that we have on our website, and other things that I'll tell you about soon. So where most people want to start is how do you make an appointment? And you can do this through the my.acu.edu system. You can uh, just log on to my.acu.edu, and on the quick links, there's a link to the online writing center, and that will bring you to a page that will give you a video for how to uh, make an appointment. It'll show you the different options, remind you about different things, and then when you're making an appointment, you have two choices on the schedule. You can either request an asynchronous appointment, which is to say, you schedule time. By the time that time rolls around, you upload a copy of your paper. We look at it. We send you feedback generally within 24 hours, slightly longer perhaps on a major holiday weekend like Easter. But uh, in all other cases, normally we'll be back with feedback in your inbox in less than a day. You can also request a real-time appointment either via phone or Zoom. This is handy if you want to talk with someone in real time and have a back and forth conversation, ask clarifying questions and things like that, that just tend to work better if you have someone immediately responding. And a lot of students who have questions about how to format something or about uh, organizing things like to be able to share their screen in Zoom uh, and see how things are done. We I also have course paper templates, sample papers from many programs, and other resources on the Writing Center website. And let me just uh, call your attention to some of the webinars that we have coming up. Later this week, we have Synthesizing Sources and Assessing Relationships that talks about how to integrate input from many different types of uh, sources and to create a more full and rich and convincing argument. Another webinar in our conflict management series coming up next Tuesday about integrating religious beliefs into scholarly arguments, and another about finding supportive sources the following Thursday. Uh, another one that I strongly recommend are Beyond Summary a webinar. This is a webinar about how to write analysis and synthesis to create more stronger, to create stronger, more grounded and generally more convincing arguments. And so that's a very focused one that dives in. It's offered every semester because it's a perennial favorite, and you can also watch recording that online immediately. Uh, more coming up, writing about religious beliefs and personal conflict, uh, about how to collaborate with your group for group projects. And this is just a small sampling of the new webinars we have on uh, the schedule for this term. Now, I want to call your attention to something on our writing webinars page, because at the top, there's a chronological calendar of all the upcoming webinars for the term. But if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see this tabbed guide that will show you all the courses that tie in with a particular pro sorry, all the webinar recordings that tie in with a particular program sorted by course. So this is a very helpful guide for finding it, what we have for the exact courses that you're taking right, right now. All right, uh, some things you'll see me referring to later. Uh, AP course paper template on uh, the YouTube channel is a great way if you are, want to watch one of our videos for one of our webinars on the go and not have to log into ACU and all that. We have a blog where we explore various topics. With that, let's look at our main focus today. 
So we're going to look at how to utilize theories and models in case study analysis. We're going to look specifically at this course for Con R 630s, Week 1, Assignment 1, The Nature of Conflict. And we're going to finish with a practical session where we sit down and talk about how to go from the instructions and the rubric to outlining and drafting the paper. So let's talk about theories and models in case study analysis. And it's always helpful to ask the question, well, why are you doing the case study analysis? What is the purpose? What is this for? And there are many possible reasons, not exclusive, one of which is to gain insights into a phenomenon or phenomena of interest, to understand the archetypical, you know, the larger patterns, patterns of scenarios, and the atypical ones, the ones that don't fit into those standard boxes, to practice applying theories and practice guidelines to design solutions, and to use the details of the case study to understand or explain theories and models. And usually there's some element of all four in a case study analysis, but the proportions will vary depending on the specific assignment. And that's certainly the case with the assignment that we're going to be looking at today. Now, it's also helpful to keep in mind that a theory it functions as a lens when you're analyzing something because theories state an explanation for how things work. And now I say proposed explanation because there can be competing theories offering alternate explanations for how things work. And that's why we call them theories and not laws. <laughs> theories also emphasize the importance of certain details. Now, for example, there is a well-known relationship advice book called The Five Love Languages that proposes five primary ways that people prefer to communicate or have communicated to them love. That is not to say that there aren't other things other than five, but the book as a whole advances a theory that there are five very important or five especially important ways to communicate. And so those are specific details that are being emphasized by the theory behind that book. Now, by extension, if it's emphasizing the importance of some things, it's de-emphasizing the importance of others. And so you can not only talk about what is important according to the theory that you're using, but how something isn't important according to that theory. More on that in a little bit. If you prefer to have an analogy here, think of reading glasses. Reading glasses are focused for up-close reading for the length that they expect that you'll be holding a book or something else that you're trying to read from in relation to your eyes. They are focused close and they're great for that, but if you're trying to see far away, that's all going to be fuzzy. So you want to pick the theory that you're going to use to the application to make sure that it emphasizes the right sort of information, you know, the kind of information that you have available. So just like you wouldn't use a telescope for looking at the moon in an opera house because <laughs> the distance is too short, but opera glasses should be around the right size for that hall. And you wouldn't use those opera glasses for reading the book in front of you. So depending on what you're looking for, what kind of things you're trying to find out what kind of information you have available, you would select the reading glasses, the opera glasses, the or binoculars, or the telescope. Now, models have a similar function, but with theories are explaining or proposing an explanation for how things work. Models are breaking it up into steps. We can see, okay, what leads to what, what is influenced by what? They're representations of something. Representations of systems that could be ideas, events, or processes. They describe the key steps or stages that these things unfold in. And in essence, they provide a practical simplification so we can understand what the big picture is and what's happening when a milestone worth noting in change or development or something else has taken place. Now here are a couple sample phrases that might be helpful in referencing those. We're going to look at this a little bit more in the outlining stage. 
But generally, you want to identify the theory or model that you're referring to very specifically. Now, the theories and models, their names in APA style are not capitalized. They're just treated in sentence case as, rather than capitalized as proper nouns. It's only when you're referring to the author or authors that you'd be capitalizing things. So you could say Sanderson's theory of blah, blah, blah. And of course, Sanderson would have the first S capitalized because it is a proper noun. But the rest of the theory name should just be in lowercase. All right, so let's take a look at the specific assignment that's our catalyst for discussion. So this is coming out of the advanced family mediation course where you're giving a scenario, a case study, that you're going to analyze. And so you're asked to read the case study. You read this case study and you have a number of things that you're supposed to do in response, of which we have giving an introduction to the paper, then a list of four things to state what stage of the family development most accurately fits the family the, the scenario and to explain that, to list the possible sources of conflict for the family, to describe the basic tenets of family systems theory represented in their family, and to use Cartman's relationship drama triangle to identify family roles there and then wrap it up in a conclusion. So leaving out the introduction and the conclusion, there are four main sections there uh, that you need to make sure that you're including here. And we see that uh, there should also be a cover page. All right, that's standard. That comes with all papers in APA style, not a problem. With your name, course number, assignment title, that's all standard, and word count. So word count is something new. That's not included in the uh, standard APA template because it's not part of the specifications listed in the APA manual. It's easy to add, though. We call that a house rule. It's something that your professor is requesting that, that you do. Now, you'll see here that there are a couple uh, other things here. We have the guideline of 1,300 to 1,400 words. So if you keep in mind that a double-spaced page with one-inch margins, 12-point font, which is what we have for the template, is going to be around 250 words per page. We're talking something uh, between roughly five to six pages of content in length. So that's not counting the cover page, it's not counting the references as spelled out in the uh, next bullet, but around five to six pages in length. And there's a specific note to include a subheading for each rubric line and to not combine it, you know, don't have a, say, uh, here's our theory and our, our triangle, you know, th those should be separate things. And a reminder to cite all the sources for the information you use but that you don't need to cite the scenario itself. The scenario is a given. All right. And this continues. So you are required to have at least six sources to support your statements, your arguments in this paper. And it should specifically include all the required reading and uh, any other resources. You can draw on things that you've found in previous courses, or seek out new ones. And when it says outstanding papers, let's interpret that as saying papers that receive full credit will use more than the required minimum number. Uh, there's a note here not to use any direct quotations, so paraphrase, cite, and reference as normal. And then the rest is just standard APA course paper stuff, double space times new Roman font, 12 point. And let's look at the grading here for the rubric. Now, this is something that you'll see me coming back to when we're talking about outlining, because the rubric is a great guide for the relative length of a paper. Now, you'll see that about 20% of, of the grade is going to, all right, is this formatted correctly? Is it the right length? Does it meet basic writing standards? That's the last two items here. And then there's a little bit of credit going towards the conclusion and a little bit going to the introduction. But by and large, 
most of the credit for this assignment is coming from these four items here. Explaining the family the development stages and how it fits the family being, being discussed, and the sources of conflict, the tenets of family system theory, and that triangle. So, given that the instructions say you should have a headache for each rubric line, uh, that means we should have at least five headings here. Now you might say, but wait, what about introduction? Shouldn't there be a heading for the introduction? Well, actually there is an APA rule that says don't have a heading called introduction at the start of your paper because it's considered redundant. We know the start of your paper should be the introduction. Uh, it's kind of like if I went and put a sign on a car that was blue that said blue car. Yes, we, we can tell immediately it's a blue car. That's not actually adding anything helpful. So accepting introduction, you want to have a heading for each of, the, of these areas here, including conclusion, as well as the separate references section and whatnot. All right, so let's look at the outlining and drafting process. And for this, I'm going to strongly recommend that you download a copy of our ACU course paper template formatted in APA style because that will let you see exactly what I'm using and try out some of the things that you see as well. So if you're watching this as a recording, I recommend that you pause now and download that template, tinyurl.com slash ACU template. Now, one of the virtues of using the template is that it does a lot of the formatting for you. So you don't need to worry about adding the page numbers and getting them in the right place. You can just start filling in the title of your paper, your name, and so on and so forth. Now, for the title of your paper, this is something where some people spend a long time thinking about it. And if the title of the paper helps you focus what you write on, great. But you don't have to have a super fancy title. In APA style, it's more important that it be descriptive and concise then it be poetic or fancy or even, shall we say, original. So if we look at this assignment, now this is the family scenario analysis, and you just chose to call this assignment one, family scenario analysis. That's not wrong. <laughs> it's not problematic. Is it fancy and original? No, but it doesn't have to be. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and whenever there is something where you are asked to do something that is uh, atypical or not part of the not part of APA style itself, in this case, the note to have the word count, which I've highlighted here. Whenever you see something like that, it is a good idea to take care of it sooner rather than later. In this case, by adding a note so you don't forget. And here's how I'm going to suggest doing that. So I believe in giving yourself practical reminders word count, and not only am I going to make it highlighted, I'm also going to insert a comment. You can do this a number of different ways, but review new comment is one. And so not only do I have this highlighting if I'm looking through my paper, but also this comment saying, hey, there's something you need to do before you submit. So that'll help make sure that I turn that in with the word count in there. And let me go ahead and remove this placeholder text here. Now, a good starting point is to copy and paste the instructions from the assignment and description, because that will give you a list of what the professor is looking for in the order that it's already written out so that that's the order that they'll be looking for this content. 
So looking at this here, we see, okay, well, that's a description for what I should do. It's not something that actually involves my writing a section here. So I'm going to cross that out to help focus things. Let's see, okay, introduction, that's not going to have a heading. But this one here can say, okay, so I'm asked to do that. So let me make a heading for that. And how should that heading be formatted? Well, because we're using the APA course paper template, you can go ahead and we're on the home part of the ribbon, open up the styles pane, and anything that I've selected that I apply this to by clicking on it will get that style. So AP level one, if, watch what happens when I click on this. That text goes from being line left to, oh, center aligned, centered, bolded. Now I, I did the title case formatting by myself. But the rest, the style does for you. Now, it's always good to have a strong alignment with the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that possible sources of conflict and use that wording from the instructions for the heading. So now it's very, very clear that that's what's going on there. That's what I'm discussing. Same thing here, okay, family systems theory, family, all right, APA level one, yay. Now, here's a question, how should this be formatted in terms of capitalization? Because I've already stated that theory and model names don't get capitalized in APA style. Well, in this case, we're actually talking about the heading, so that it's a moot point. <laughs> the heading should, text should be formatted in title case, which means that, among other things, any word with four or more letters gets the first letter capitalized. So not an issue we need to worry about at this very moment. And then to round things out, the conclusion heading. So within the larger paper, we have a set of APA level one headings, delineating the different sections. And now let's talk about sources, that is to say, sources of different information. So it does say this should include at least all of the sources listed in the week's required reading, as well as any other materials that you choose to bring in. So, well, if you're going to be required to use them, Let's make sure that they get added to the uh, to the, the paper that we're, we're currently outlining. So if you look at the required readings for this week's module, you'll see, oh, Taylor chapters one and two, uh, Benjamin, and a number of recommended readings you can draw on and other resources. Now, something to keep in mind is that as listed in the syllabus, there is more information than is included in an APA 7 reference. Things like the location, the city and state, the ISBN number. These are all handy if you're trying to order a copy of the book. But you want to make sure that you reformat it to APA style so you don't lose points on that. And you can see for the, those, the three books listed in the syllabus, I've shown how you might reformat these. Something to keep in mind is that you always want to make sure that you are going back to the sources themselves when you can, and that you are checking for accuracy. So something I caught here, the McKnight and Erickson source, uh, not only are we adding a comma before the ampersand, that's an APA formatting thing, not only is the title of the book being italicized, but also I noticed, oh, Jossie Bass, oh, you know, that's not quite the name of the publisher as written here. That is just a little bit off. And so by checking that, you can help make sure that you get all of the credit that uh, you want by checking and make sure that all of this is capitalized correctly. Now, as for this here, 
the sandcastle's weight, that's because that's a proper noun being used there. All right, now if you find that you are looking for more sources and you want to know where to begin, well, keep in mind that most of the pages in module one do have reference at the bottom saying where that information came from. So you can always read up on those sources that are listed there in the bottom of the page references. You can also go to the distance learning portal and there you can use ACU OneSearch to look for new material, to look for who's citing an article or things that have similar keywords. And for some students, it's easier to just go to Google Scholar and look at uh, what comes up there. And we're going to take a moment to look at that because this is an important part of this assignment. So if we go to the distance learning portal, you see that this brings us right to ACU One Search. So let's say that we are looking for family, divorce, Texas, and models. This will bring up a preliminary set of results. It's going to be a lot because we've given some very general terms. And something that you want to do almost immediately is to start limiting the search. So more than 100,000 results, yeah, we don't have time for that. That would be probably several lives worth of reading. So we're going to restrict this to full text and scholarly journals, that is peer-reviewed journals. And we're also going to make sure that it is stuff that is recent. Now, what qualifies as recent research depends on the field. It especially depends have there been any notable changes in laws or other regulations here? And uh, in this case, we're going to define it as last five years. So we're restricted to things published from 2018 to present. And we see, ah, um, yeah, mm -hmm. divorcing partners and fighting siblings. Uh, that actually reminds me very strongly of some of the reading for this module. Now, you may find that your particular interests drive you to look at one thing versus another. But in this case, uh, we're just using an illustrative example. So let's say that you used this one here, the collaborative law model here. So if you click on this link, this will take us to the detailed thing and we can view an abstract to see, okay, before we look at the whole paper, is this brief summary of this abstract listing some of the key elements of this, does this make you think that this is kind of source that's a useful investment to read into? Now, if it is, then I would go ahead and use this cite button. And what this does is this provides a accelerated way of formatting this according to uh, this particular style system that you're using, in this case, APA 7th edition. Now, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of cleanup we'll have to do here. But overall, it saves a lot of time. So I'm going to select that, copy it, go to my course paper template here. And in our references list, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, uh, keep text only. All right, now, if we just quickly add the italics that were there, we end up with this. Now, I mentioned that some tweaking is going to be needed. That's because in the references list, the title of a journal article, not the journal, this is the journal title, but the title of the journal article should be in sentence case. And you could just manually delete and type in for all those, but there's a better way. Here on the Home tab in Word, home tab on the ribbon, there is a case changer. So I can select some text and say, oh, make that all lowercase. And oh, want to do that same thing, make that all lowercase. And so you see in a matter of seconds, I have gotten this so it is a nice fully APA compliant reference. 
Now do remember that you should only list things in the reference section that you are citing, so make sure that you do actually cite it. But when you're describing the basic tenets of a theory, one way to do that is to describe it in relation to something else. Oh, this is shared with this other theory. And so as you do your reading, you can look and see, okay, here's where I'm going to need to use that in the, the paper. So let me add something in the outline so I have a reminder for that. Now, if you are looking at the required reading for this week, which you've been told by the instructions you should include, well, this would be a good time to add the Taylor source. And if you end up using the other ones, eh, or you're sure that you're going to use them, you could add them now. But the Taylor resource is definitely required reading. So let's go ahead and make sure that gets added. And this is, of course, sorted alphabetically. So that would go after that. I use keep text only. And go ahead and add back in the italics. There we have that. So where is this going to come up? Well, uh, this is Handbook of Family Dispute Resolution, Mediation Theory. Uh, well, Mediation Theory certainly details certain things as potential sources of conflict, so it's probably going to be coming up here. And so you could say, all right, well, that is going to be Taylor. And even if you don't know anything else about how you're going to be doing it, using it, which particulars, you can still make a note there so that when you are doing the reading for that, you are checking for how you might plug that in here. Okay, we're going to have to wrap things up shortly, so let's go back and do a brief review. So today we looked at how to utilize theories and models in case study analysis. We look specifically at the instructions for this assignment, and we finish with looking at how to use the instructions for the assignment to start the outlining and drafting process. Reminder, ask yourself, what is the purpose of the case study? And that will help you if you find yourself not writing enough to say, oh, well, this is the purpose of this, let me expand that. It's not that you won't use all four of these, but the proportions will vary based on the specific assignment. Make sure that you clarify when you're giving your opinion versus, oh, the theory emphasizes the importance of X. Or according to this model, this is that stage. Or according to this model, they are at this stage of development. And if in doubt, take a look at some of the stock phrases that we provided. And make sure that you go back and say, OK, have I specifically lifted all the family rules from this scenario and describe them here? And with that, let's bring things to a close. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email us at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu. You can go to my.acu.edu to start the process of scheduling an appointment or check out our resources online. Always happy to work with students. And again, any questions, send us an email. Have a good day.